war. War never changes. And human history is absolutely filled with it. We've had pointless wars, psychological wars, ambiguous wars, ideological wars, awesome wars, and really, really stupid wars, the latter of which we'll be focusing on today. Or, in other words, this will be my sixth explain video in a row because I've got no idea how to vary my content. Enjoy! <laughs> The quote, really, really stupid war we'll be talking about today is called The War of the Bucket, but you already know that since you read the title before you even clicked the video, so I'm not quite sure what the point of that sentence was. Never mind. Unlike last time, this title is actually quite descriptive and quite accurate. What you think when you read this title is probably actually what happened. Some people in Italy had a war over a bucket. A bucket. That particular bucket, in fact. And 4,000 people died. Yep. How? Well, it's time to explain, and surprise, surprise, it isn't as simple as I made it sound. The story starts around 1100 AD-ish in Italy, or what was to become Italy, because at the time the peninsula was filled with these tiny by modern standard city-states. Like normal countries, these tiny states had their own alliances, political adversaries, and so forth. In 1176, a power struggle was brewing between the Lombard League and also the Papal States, ruled by Pope Alexander III, and the Holy Roman Empire, ruled by the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa. I won't go into the complicated politics as to why they were fighting, nor the Battle of Legando, or who actually won in that rivalry, because that's not important for our purposes. These aren't the sides that fought in the War of the Bucket, neither is it even close to being the right century. I'm just trying to give you context. This rivalry divided most of the Italian city-states between the two sides. You had the Guelphs, who supported the Papal and Lombard League side of the argument, and then the Ghibellines, who supported the HRE. The actual rivalry soon died around 1250 for our purposes, but the guelph ghibelline rivalry persisted within the states for a few centuries afterwards, which makes total sense. This rivalry had changed with a later Holy Roman Emperor calling both sides unworthy. They went through periods of relative peace, and then warfare, and then peace, and in the years leading up to 1325 we can see a slow but gradual resurgence in violence between the two sides, leading to massive tension. An ancient grudge breaking to new mutiny in medieval Italy? Haha, <laughs> who would have thought of such a thing? That tension would soon be broken by a bucket, but we're not done yet. Finally, we get to the actual forces that fought in the War of the Bucket. The city-state of Bologna, which is of the Guelph persuasion, and the other city-state of Moderna, which sided with the Ghibellines. Due to their proximity, in 1325 opposing raids and border clashes happened extremely often with one particular raid of note. In around September or October of 1325, some soldiers from Moderna made it all the way to Bologna and stole an oak bucket filled with loot. This is the bucket of the War of the Bucket. So yay, we did it guys, we got there. It's definitely a situation that could best be described as the straw that broke the camel's back, because on hearing this, the Bolognese, mmm, tasty, were really quite miffed, and that anger only grew when the Modernese proudly displayed their spoils afterwards. Bologna demanded the loot and said bucket back. Moderna refused, so Bologna declared war on Moderna because of it. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Because in the coming month, 30,000 men and 2,000 knights, mostly from Guelph cities, soon came to the Bolognese side, and even the then Pope John the twenty set. 22nd? Wow, that's a lot of Johns, led the army. Back then it was quite common to have religious officials leading armies and whatnot. The Montagues, I mean Montagues, in return tried to raise a countering force, but only managed to collect over about 5,000 men, not including cavalry, meaning they are outnumbered over 6 to 1 on the battlefield. With a total count of over 40,000 people, it was double the size of the Battle of Hastings at 17,000, which decided the fate of England and around the size of Agincourt, which was to happen 90 years after this, in which the English won despite being numerically outnumbered, which is a bit of foreboding for you. However, from what I can tell, most of the participants weren't trained mercenaries, which is really this battle's Achilles heel. Both sides first confronted each other in the first battle of the war on the evening of the 15th November 1325, here, near the town of Zappolino, leading the battle to be called the Battle of Zappolino, 
The violence waged intensely, with at first each side losing approximately 2,000 men, which is comparatively worse for the modern ease, but despite this loss, they managed to cause a collapse in order within the massive Pope-led army, which in battle terms is called a rout, and the opposing force fled to their city of Bologna, which was actually quite close to Zappolino, so they planned that out quite well. Despite being outnumbered 6 to 1, the Bolognese had lost the first, and as it turns out, only war fought in the War of the Bucket. The following January, a treaty was signed ending the war and giving up the Guelph domination that they'd had since the very beginning. The rivalry eventually ended, the war faded from local memory, but today, almost 700 years later, you can still go to the victorious Italian city of Moderna, to the Palazzo Communale, and inside, on display, you can still find the bucket that started it all so long ago. And that's the War of the Bucket, but one question remains. Is it really that silly? On the surface, of course it is, people dying over a bucket, but when you look at the actual events, the complex build-up to the war, it's just a normal war, like World War I, that was winding towards conflict anyway. Just in this case, it was something petty that started the whole thing. Does that invalidate the entire war and make it stupid? Uh, maybe, I'm not sure. And the bucket was also filled with loot, so that might have had something to do with it. So, is it really stupid or not? Well, you decide, but if you like stupid conflicts, you're in the right place, because this video was done in collaboration with a fellow Describing Interesting Things channel called Shorts and Facts, who have done a separate video on the Pig War of 1859, a quote, war between the US and UK caused by the shooting of a pig. Click here if you want to watch it, it's really quite interesting, not just the war but the channel itself, so I can guarantee that if you like my channel, then you'll like his. Enjoy, and all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching.